The next theory that we're going to be talking about has to do with celebrities, the Illuminati, and lie detectors. Today's video is going to be yet another pop culture conspiracy theories video for you guys. If you know me, you know I love pop culture. I just think it's so interesting. There's so much conspiracy surrounding it in general that I just, I love talking about it. I love celebrities. I just, I feed off this shit. It's so fun. When you have a bunch of human beings in the spotlight at all times, there's naturally gonna be a ton of conspiracy theories surrounding them. So without further ado, let's get into the theories. First one that I wanna talk about is about my bitch, Sabrina Carpenter. I have been obsessed with Sabrina Carpenter for so long, and now I feel like she's finally getting the recognition she deserves. I've just been obsessed with her, especially more lately because everyone else is. And I just, I love it. I love it. But there is a theory about her and Olivia Rodrigo that I think is really interesting. So obviously Olivia Rodrigo and Sabrina Carpenter had a pretty famous feud. I don't really know if it was necessarily a feud. It was more so they like, kind of wrote songs like about each other or more so about their mutual ex Joshua Bassett. I'm sure you guys have heard all the tea on this. It all went down in 2021. So you might be like, what's the tea now? Like what's going on? Olivia Rodrigo actually follows zero people on Instagram. Like that's just always been a thing. And then one day randomly last year in July of 2022, she randomly started following her ex Joshua Bassett. That was like the one person she followed for like an hour and then she unfollowed him. A lot of people assumed that she was like stalking her ex and this was a mistake, but no one really knew the true story behind it because she never addressed it. Until this year. A few weeks ago, she actually was on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. She basically confirmed all of our suspicions, which was that she was one day stalking her ex and accidentally followed him. It's a cute and funny story. And you might be wondering, but where does Sabrina Carpenter or the conspiracy theory come into this? Sabrina Carpenter was promoting her music video, Santa Doesn't Know You Like I Do. She posted on her Instagram story, her music video. But instead of linking her own music video, she accidentally linked the video of Olivia Rodrigo saying that she followed Joshua Bassett on Jimmy Fallon. A lot of people conspirize that this was actually on purpose as somewhat of a publicity stunt. Naturally, it's getting people to watch her story and click the link to that music video to see if rumor was true that she had linked the Olivia Rodrigo video first. Obviously she did, but quickly deleted it. So now anyone who clicks on the story to go look to see it for themselves, gets directed to the correct link of her music video, thus generating more views. I just think that this makes so much sense, but if it wasn't intentional, I think that's so freaking funny. Like that would just, I can't imagine if that was me, if I was Sabrina in that situation. Look, cause I feel like I so would be. Like she obviously like, saw the video, probably sent the link to one of her friends being like, oh my God, like LOL. And like accidentally posting that link is so embarrassing. Like, ugh. I can't. If it's not a publicity sign, I honestly feel kind of bad for Sabrina because I just feel like that would be so embarrassing. I don't know, but let me know your guys' thoughts. Do you think that she did this on purpose? If it was intentional, it's actually pretty freaking genius, I'll say. Like, I think that's a brilliant idea. And it kind of makes a lot of sense. So let me know your thoughts. All right, the next theory I want to talk about has to do with Amanda Bynes. So we've talked about Amanda Bynes quite a bit in the past, but she has been kind of concerning a lot of people lately. It makes me really sad to think about Amanda Bynes because just seeing her and loving her like as a kid and like knowing that she had to go through so much in the way that she did and like leaving acting altogether and just struggling publicly a lot is really sad. Like I can't even imagine what she actually went through. But there are a lot of theories going around about Amanda Bynes because she recently started a new podcast and people have some questions about her co-host. She launched her podcast called Amanda Bynes and Paul Siminski, the podcast. So Paul is Amanda's alleged best friend and roommate. But a lot of people started to grow very concerned for Amanda when this TikTok creator, Everybody Hates Christina, posted a TikTok talking about Paul Siminski. Listen, we need to get this out there. The guy that Amanda has made this podcast with is not a scientist. He's claiming to her that he's a scientist. He is my old roommate. He is a sociopath. He had lied to me, said he was a scientist for like over seven years. We were friends. I would be his cat sitter and dog sitter when he would go out of town for over seven years. Um, and then one day we moved in together. I went out of town and he sacrificed my dog's life, unalived him to a blood moon or something. And then deleted all the footage and then lied about it for months and months and months. And then um, left 
like literally went outside for a cigarette and left the moment that I got into the security footage because he knew there was videos of him doing it on there. She claims that she knew Paul for seven years and that he is a complete sociopath and liar. She basically goes on to say that Paul was her old roommate and he lied to her about being a scientist, which is something that Amanda has said about him, like that he's this scientist, but apparently that's not true. They were friends for a while. They would watch each other's pets and so forth. One day this girl left town and she left her dog in the care of Paul. And when she got home, she discovered that Paul had murdered her dog in a blood moon sacrifice. And when she discovered like the security camera footage proving that this actually did happen, Paul just like completely abandoned the apartment and left a random like new dog for her, which is just nuts. So Paul and Amanda Bynes now live together, which is concerning fans that this man might not be who he says he is. With the recent start of the podcast together, it's definitely got people talking. And the whole vibe around the podcast is kind of just confusing because after one episode, Amanda made a TikTok basically saying that they were no longer going to continue the podcast because she can't get guests that she wants like Post Malone, Drake, and Jack Harlow. She was like, we're pausing it for now. And then she came back like a few hours later and was like, just kidding. Actually, everyone's telling me to keep going with the podcast and maybe we could get these types of guests in the future. Amanda then posted on her story saying, quote, turning the comments off for a while. Every time I come on here, I see horrible name calling towards Paul and it's very stressful to see over and over again when Paul has been nothing but great. I do not approve of the harassment that has been happening to Paul and I do not approve of everyone that has blindly picked up a story that has been hearsay and has prompted to harass not only Paul's Instagram, but mine as well. To the girl who made the video, I have been shown your Craigslist posts of your missing dog that was lost during Paul's care. I am very sorry that happened to you. And then Amanda deleted all of her TikToks like a few hours ago. Like this seems to be unfolding as I am filming this video, which is December 19th. And so I don't even know what updates like could have come since then. I just think that there is something super strange going on. And I feel like I don't necessarily trust anyone around Amanda Bynes right now because in the current moment it's clear that Amanda has been through a lot and needs help. The abnormalities in her behavior are so prominent that I just I I don't know I hope she gets help. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this. What do you think is going on with Paul and Amanda? Like do you think this guy is who he says he is? I don't know. All right, the next theory that we're gonna be talking about has to do with celebrities, the Illuminati, and lie detectors. There is a theory that the Illuminati has celebrities take these lie detector tests and be asked if they're in the Illuminati on purpose so that they can kind of like say yes as a joke and then it appears that they're lying, but really like they're telling the truth. Does that make sense? I've seen this done now twice. First time with Chloe and Kourtney Kardashian. You can watch it for yourself. Are you a part of the Illuminati? Yes, no, I'm not. Did that come up as a lie when I said yes? Yes, that's true. Oh, <laughs> See? shit. That means I'm not. She you said, you said are you answers. a part of the Illuminati? And I said, yes. And then you changed and it. And then I said, no. And then now again with Wiz Khalifa. Are you part? of the Illuminati. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Is that really the truth? No. <laughs> I just think that the way that they reacted to this lie detector is perfect, because if they are part of this Illuminati, making a joke of it and saying yes, and then it being like, see, it says I'm lying, like I said yes. But really, like, what indicates a lie is, like, your sweat and, like, your heart rate. So it's like kind of the nervousness of the question in general. So a lot of people think that them lying is really just a tactic to get people to be thrown off the case of the Illuminati. I mean, I will say, I think making a joke of the Illuminati is the biggest way to get people to believe that it is not real. I think that a lot of people after Jim Carrey joked about it on Jimmy Kimmel started to believe that maybe it's not real at the end of the day, if it's this scary big thing, why would a celebrity be joking about it on national television? Is that a gang sign? Have you, uh... Oh, like you don't know what it is. You don't know what that is. I have no idea. Well, you don't know. Jimmy Fallon doesn't know. David Letterman doesn't know. Well, we don't know. All the comics and show business don't know what this is. <laughs> right? 
Yeah. What is it? Come on, Jimmy. Seriously, the time is up. People are hip to this kind of stuff. I, I'm here tonight to blow the lid off it, to be the whistleblower. I'm sick and tired of the secrets and the lies. It is the secret symbol of the Luminati, and you're a part of it, and it is it, the all-mocking tongue. Although some people do believe that he wasn't joking, a lot of people were like, eh probably the Illuminati doesn't exist in general because of how nonchalantly Jim Carrey was treating it as a comedian. But for me, one Illuminati like kind of interview that really sticks out to me has always been Ariana Grande on the Kelly Clarkson show. I think it's just because these are like two women that I feel like have like a sweet, trustworthy vibe. And they're essentially just telling you and making a joke about how people have asked them before if they're a part of the Illuminati. You will be, so happy you will be another member of the Illuminati. Oh, That's yeah. my favorite thing. I love that thing too. Everyone always thinks we're part of the Illuminati. Oh, and somebody was like, yeah, they're witches. I'm like, if I'm a witch, I have the least amount of power in the world. Like, no, um, but yeah, yeah. that is like such a thing. Like I have like friends whose moms are it's like, a thing. is it true? And I'm like, what? I had a family like, member ask yeah, me. Yeah, actually it is. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. So scary. Wait, so I, it's the weirdest thing ever. When I first saw this video, I was like, wow, the Illuminati is so fake or at least celebrities are not a part of it, which I still think could be true. But then again, when I think about it, I'm like, obviously keeping things so lighthearted and like such a joke makes sense in the grand scheme of things because it's just making everyone think that the Illuminati should be considered a joke and it's not real. But isn't that kind of like the perfect distraction to get people to think that it's not real? I don't know. I normally am like really scared by theories like this, but I actually feel like this one kind of makes a lot of sense. So let me know your thoughts. All right, the next theory that we're gonna be talking about is all about Tupac. We've talked about the theory that Tupac is secretly still alive and had faked his own death many times in the past, but there has been some new evidence that seems to really prove this theory that I hadn't seen or talked about before. So there is this infamous last photo of Tupac and Suge Knight at a red light moments before Tupac was shot. Conspiracy theorists have pointed out the fact that there are actually no keys in the ignition of this car, even though they were actively driving at this point. This was way before push to start cars existed, like there would have to be a key in the ignition. Not only that, but the photo also says that the picture was taken on September 8th of 1996 when Tupac died September 7th of 1996. That's when he was pronounced dead. And the man who actually took the picture even claims that he snapped it right at a red light and it was moments before they took off and moments before Tupac got shot. So this has led conspiracy theorists to believe that all of this was f completely faked. There's quite a few other oddities when it comes to Tupac's death. The coroner report of his death listed him at 215 pounds, which is 50 pounds heavier than he actually was. Not only that, but no one seems to be able to find the person who cremated Tupac. No one knows where he is. And also eyewitnesses who were there at the scene of the crime have always said that they reported to never have heard gunshots picture just gets me because there would just absolutely be keys in the ignition in this photo there should be where are they and a lot of conspiracy theorists agree that this was all staged and I'm starting to think that that kind of makes sense let me know your guys' thoughts do you think Tupac is still alive I'm not sure. I do think it could be a possibility but I don't know. All right the next theory that we're going to be talking about is the Pete Davidson theory. I love deep diving into everything Pete Davidson. Like, I just don't get it. But there's a theory about Pete Davidson that I found to be pretty interesting. So the theory goes that the reason that it seems like Pete is climbing the social ladder of women is to get closer to the Illuminati so that he can find out what actually happened on 9-11. So Pete Davidson has always been pretty vocal about the fact that his father was a New York City firefighter who sadly passed away on September 11, 2001. And obviously there are a lot of conspiracy theories talking about how the Illuminati slash the government in general could be tied to what happened on September 11th slash maybe even planned it. And I feel like most of the population has heard this theory and I'm sure Pete Davidson is not the exception. So many conspiracy theorists think he's been dating celebrities like up and up to try to climb to find the top elite people who may have been involved 
with the terrorist attack that killed his father. It started with Cassie David, who is Larry David's daughter, and then obviously he moved on to Ariana Grande, and then Kim Kardashian, which I think is like probably where the eliteness started occurring and like being able to meet up with these people who are billionaires and just top Hollywood elites that he would probably not have had access to had he never dated Ariana in the first place. I'm gonna be real. I mean, when he was dating Kim, he even met with like Jeff Bezos, who is obviously a billionaire. And a lot of people think that he is like the freaking face of the Illuminati. Even people still believe that Kanye knows so much more about the Illuminati and of course, with being close to Kim, that also probably gave him access to Kanye. I want to know, do you think that Pete Davidson has dated these people to get closer to the information that he thinks that they have? I don't know. I do think that it makes a lot of sense. And it's definitely like a possibility, like if anyone were to have information, like say 9-11 was like Illuminati slash government scheme, if anyone's gonna have information on that, he's gotta climb the ladder even higher. But Jeff Bezos and Kim Kardashian are a pretty good start. So I'm kind of curious to see where this goes. And if he continues to climb that social ladder, like imagine he just starts dating like Hillary Clinton, like that would be crazy. What if he dated AOC? That'd be nuts. If he goes for a politician next, that's when you know. Like I feel like the politicians know more than the celebrities, but the celebrities can introduce you to the politicians. It all is connected. So I kind of believe that this theory makes a little bit of sense. So let me know your thoughts. So speaking of the Kardashians, I saw a TikTok creator come up with this theory about Kim Kardashian. So Skims recently released a promo for their men's line with various different, very famous athletes as like the cover photos for it. So this conspiracy theory basically is that Kim is trying to capitalize off of Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift's relationship and the new kind of wave of obsession with athletes. And I'm gonna say that lightly because the men in my life who like football and liked football well before Taylor Swift started dating Travis Kelsey will argue that, you know, Travis Kelsey was super famous before he started dating Taylor Swift. I'm sure that's great and true for people who are into sports. But the rest of the population slash the population who are probably buying skims, I feel like we're not that into sports. I don't know if that's just me but I feel like it's a general statement. Maybe we're not that into sports, but now that Taylor Swift is dating an athlete, I gotta say she's making dating an athlete look kinda nice. Now that Taylor Swift has started dating Travis Kelsey, the whole fantasy of like dating like a pro footballer is back. Like now everyone wants an athlete and I, Get it. So I think it makes a lot of sense that Kim would be using the Skims campaign to kind of sell the fantasy of, you know, your boyfriend or your husband or even just you wanting to look like an athlete and to have that like have that Travis Kelsey type shit. I think that this makes a lot of sense, but I think it goes even more hand in hand with the fact that in the recent Skims Christmas campaign, Kim had featured Brittany and Patrick Mahomes. So if you did not know who that was, Patrick Mahomes is on the same team as Travis Kelsey and Brittany and Taylor Swift have become pretty good friends since Taylor and Travis started dating. They're kind of cute, like little footballers wives together. I, I love it. So the prospects of the Mahomes being in a Skims ad was kind of controversial and got a lot of people talking because obviously Taylor had a very famous feud with Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. So it's interesting that her new like friends and the people that she's spending a lot of time with are now doing a campaign with her alleged enemy. Personally, I think that the beef between Taylor and Kim has been squashed like behind the scenes more than we know, because obviously Kim and Kanye are not even together anymore. It was mostly Kanye that was the issue between Taylor and Kanye. I just think their beef is squashed. And I do have a theory that like Kim is going to somehow feature in reputation Taylor's version, and that would be epic and insane. But nonetheless, I do think that this is a brilliant marketing tactic on skims because not only is skims profiting off of the you know concept of the fact that patrick mahomes is on the same team as travis kelsey and you know capitalizing off of travis and taylor's relationship 
in general, but also capitalizing off the fact that the feud between Kim and Taylor, like keeping that flame going, it's getting more people to look at Skim's Instagram and getting more people to ultimately buy Skim's products. And I honestly think that it makes so much sense. Like I full heartedly believe this theory, but let me know your guys' thoughts. I want to hear them because I don't know. I think it's like kind of funny. I do feel like everything that has to do with marketing and like conspiracy surrounding that is super interesting because it just makes complete sense, honestly. All right, the next theory that we're gonna talk about is the Hollywood hair theory. So there is a theory that's been popularized on TikTok lately that if you wanna be a successful singer, you have to have kind of a standout hair look. I think that this concept actually low key makes a lot of freaking sense. And it goes back in time too, because we start with like, let's talk like Dolly Parton, for example. She has such a specific iconic look that it makes complete sense why she's such an icon and famous celebrity. It completely like folds into place. Amy Winehouse, I feel like was very underground for years before the beehive and the eyeliner were introduced to her look. That is really what made her cross the pond and become famous everywhere. Ariana Grande, I swear, if you look back to it, it's the second that bitch introduced the ponytail that she popped off. Like she was obviously famous from like Victorious and just having an incredible voice. For sure, the talent's gotta be there too. But as soon as she introduced like a signature look, it got people popping off about her. Billie Eilish is the same. Like she has such a signature hair to her. Um, and even when she first started, she always kind of had cool hair. Halsey, when she first started, had really cool blue hair that was like very standout and specific. And I think that this theory makes complete freaking sense. It's so obvious to me. It just is so real. And also the reason I think it really works too is like Halloween and Halloween costumes. I think having such an iconic look that you can dress up like someone for Halloween is like a level of fame that is insane. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know. I just really believe this theory. Let me know your guys' thoughts though. The next theory that I wanna talk about is how Garth Brooks is allegedly a serial killer. I don't really know. I have never heard of this man, but he is a country singer and the Jumpers Jump Boys posted this TikTok about him that I thought was kind of interesting. Do you know who Garth Brooks is? The country artist. Yeah, yeah. one of the most famous country singers, like mm -hmm. listened to of all time. So there's a theory going around that he's actually a serial killer on some Bob Bra shit. What the fuck? Yeah. Wait, how? So so they took um his tours, right? Yeah. Coincidentally, every time Garth Brooks goes on these big American tours in those cities, those local towns, every time he plays there. A murder happens the same night. What Garth type, of, what type of murder? Like, like murder, fam. Like, what could, what else could there be? Like, murder. Like, someone gets killed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's weird because it's like every other show that he goes to, people have actually taken like a record of all the tours of that he went to and murders throughout the history. And they haven't been caught. Like, nobody's been no, caught. No, and nobody's it. been caught. And it's been lined up. Shit. Fam. And it was crazy because. At one of his concert, there was a there's a video, there's a sign that somebody put up, and it was like, "We love you, Garth," right? Mm -hmm. And then right after, he pulls away the sign, and there's another sign underneath it, and it says, "Where are the bodies, G?" And right away, the cameraman notices it and flips back fuck? to Garth. So I don't know if I necessarily believe this theory, but I do think that it's strange how everything lines up. I want to hear your thoughts. If you're a big country music fan too. Let's hear it because I don't know. So the last theory has to do with Taylor Swift being a witch. It's honestly not a new theory that Taylor Swift might be tied to Satanism slash witchcraft. This has been like kind of a thing. Many people actually believe that she is a descendant of the high priestess of the Church of Satan, Zena Levy, because they honestly look extremely similar. We've talked about this theory before many years ago, but she strikes a pretty resemblance to this girl. A lot of people believe that this means that Taylor Swift is actually related to the founder of the Church of Satan. I've never really personally like believed that to be true. I mean, I guess it's a possibility, but it's just never something that I thought was like too interesting. And I I didn't feel like Taylor had any part of her that like kind of showed a Satan side to her either. Although some people will argue like her music videos have satanic themes and XYZ. I don't know. 
But I will say the Willow music video did get me thinking. So Taylor begins this music video at her piano, which is attached to a golden thread. And anytime someone hears her play music, they're basically entranced and become obsessed with her. And it's almost as if they're worshiping her in this one moment where all these like golden orbs are around her. Conspiracy theorists believe that that is supposed to represent the souls of the people who worship Taylor Swift. And then she ends the music video by going back to her piano because that is what gives her the power. Taylor Swift's Eras Tour performance of Willow is also super witchy. It's like very culty vibes. It has a very eerie vibe to it for sure. It feels like a witch ritual, honestly. This combined with the fact that also Taylor Swift has little album called Willow the Witch Collection with like different versions of Willow and it's got a lot of people thinking and believing that perhaps Taylor Swift is actually a witch. I actually think there's a lot of celebrities that low-key practice witchcraft. We've talked about some before. Ariana Grande is a big one. Like there are so many different celebrities who seem to believe in witchcraft, which I think is pretty cool. Some people might disagree with that. I don't believe that witchcraft and Satanism like go hand in hand necessarily. Like I don't think people who are witches necessarily worship Satan. So I don't know if I believe that Taylor Swift is a Satan worshiper, but could she be into witchcraft and like doing all witchy stuff on the side? For sure. I actually think it makes a lot of sense and I do really believe that Taylor Swift is in her witchy era. But either way, that is it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of these conspiracy theories. If you have any other pop culture conspiracy theories that you want me to talk about, let me know. But that is it for today's video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, and subscribe for new videos every week, and I will see you guys later. Bye!